Fred Wallace Smith was born on 11th August 1944 in Marks, Mississippi. He was named after his father, James Frederick Smith, and was the younger of two sons. His father was an entrepreneur and businessman who founded the Dixie Greyhound bus lines. Fred Sr. further founded the Tuttle House restaurant chain together with his first son to supplement the family fortune. Fred lost his father in 1948 when he was only four years old. Fortunately, his father had made sufficient money to cater to the needs of his family, his wife, and four children. Nevertheless, it would take a very long time before the children would enjoy their father's saved fortune on their 21st birthdays. Fred Sr. did this for fear that the children would live extravagantly and squander their fortunes. During his childhood, Fred was crippled by bone disease. He had a birth defect known as the calve Perth's disease, a type of childhood arthritis of the hips that is caused by temporary loss of blood supply to the hip. Due to the disease, Fred had braces on his hip to stabilize his joint sockets and spent most of his childhood years on crutches. However, when he was 10, he regained his health by outgrowing the disease. Fred attended Presbyterian Day School for his elementary education and his high school at Memphis University Prep, where he participated in athletics. He loved football and was an excellent football player. He also developed a keen interest in planes and flying. By the time he was 15, he was already a skilled amateur pilot. He operated a crop duster. Fred also developed his business acumen early. While he was in high school, he, together with other students, started a small recording studio, which they called the Ardent Record Company. The company later became a legitimate company. In 1962, Fred attended Yale University, where he studied economics and political science. At Yale, Fred wrote a paper for an economic class, where he outlined an overnight delivery service in a computer information age for small-time sensitive goods like medical supplies and replacement parts to major cities in the U.S. Some theories suggested that Fred had a C for this paper, but what mattered was the idea stayed with him. While at Yale, Fred became friends with George W. Bush and John Kerry. He also shared an interest in aviation with Kerry, who was his flying partner. In 1966, Fred obtained his bachelor's degree in economics and shortly after, he was enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps. He served with the Corps for three years, 1966 to 1969, as a platoon leader and as a forward air controller, FAC. He flew in the back seat of the OV-10. All through his years with the Corps, Fred was a Marine Corps ground officer. Fred was specifically trained to fly with pilots and observe and control ground action. However, some held that Fred was a second lieutenant who joined in the Vietnam War to fight in Southeast Asia. Whatever his post was, Fred used the opportunity to carefully study the procurement and delivery procedures to fine-tune his idea for overnight delivery service. Fred married Linda Black Grissom in 1969. The couple had two children before the divorce in 1977. He remarried Diane Avis and had eight children with her. Altogether, Fred had ten children. Fred returned to the U.S. in 1970 and purchased the controlling interest in ARC Aviation Sales, an aircraft maintenance company. By 1971, Fred focused on trading use jets. The business was a success. Fred recorded a posting of more than $9 million in revenue from the company. Despite the huge profits he made, he was not satisfied with the business. Later in 1971, Fred felt it was time for him to revisit and develop his old idea. Several financial institutions showed interest but were not so convinced that Fred's proposal would be realistic, though his idea was practical and simple on paper. Financially, the idea required lots of money to be implemented. Fred would need money for planes, pilots and insurance. More so, Fred must design a distribution channel that would not only link any two locations but would also ensure that consignments are delivered back and forth within the supposed 24-hour time frame, which had never been tried before in any package delivery system. Since Fred couldn't figure out a way to overcome these problems, he decided to do contract work to the Federal Reserve System to help them transport, sort and reroute checks. Fred needed a fleet of planes that would pick up consignment for delivery at night when air traffic was minimal. 
Consignments will then be dropped for sorting at the central hub. From the central hubs, the parcel will be moved to their pickup destinations within 24 hours using either air or land transportation. Memphis was chosen as the central hub because of its labor resources, moderate climate, and central location. Fred also proposed that the company should own its private planes to bypass federal shipping regulations. Unfortunately, Fred was not able to convince the Federal Reserve that his proposal was feasible. As a result, he decided to engage in an intensive advertising campaign for his business to convince anybody who might be interested in his business. Within a short time, Fred created a web of interconnected cities that would provide an easy distribution channel for his Federal Express service. Fred eventually launched the Federal Express Corporation on June 18, 1971, when he was 27 years old. Fred used most of the money left to him by his father, together with $91 million from venture capitalists, on the business. He wanted his career service business to provide better services than the regular postal service. By 1973, Fred's career service was already established. Federal Express had a fleet of 14 Falcon jets, lots of vans and distribution routes to 25 cities. However, only a few people were encouraged by Fred's business and its performance during the first two years was so poor. He lost almost a third of his startup cash during the first three months of operation. Sometimes his drivers had to pay for gas from their own pockets. In an interview, Fred said, people thought we were bananas. We were too ignorant to know that we weren't supposed to be able to do certain things. At one point, Fred's sisters even sued him for misusing their trust fund fortune. Despite the trial, Fred continued with the advertisement. He believed that an advertisement was essential for the survival of his company. His patience and perseverance soon paid off. When Federal Express began to amass profit by 1976, as it began delivery of computer parts, documents, and sensitive parcels like body organs and blood. Though there was competition from other courier services like UPS, Federal Express's customer base grew gradually, ranging from several clientels to several businesses. The company also handled package deliveries for the federal government. By 1978, Federal Express became financially stable enough to go public and began selling shares on the New York Stock Exchange. In 1984, Federal Express surpassed $1 billion in revenues. In 1988, Fred acquired Flying Tigers, a Los Angeles-based international heavy freight carrier for $880 million. This action made Federal Express the largest all-cargo airline in the world with its network of overseas delivery routes. In 1994, Fred changed the name of the company to FedEx. That same year, Fred introduced Internet Ship that enabled customers to coordinate and track their domestic deliveries through the Internet. Two decades later, Fred was ranked 26th in the Fortunes magazine list of world's 50 greatest leaders. According to Forbes, Fred is now worth more than $2.5 billion. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.